All right, so we're down today again pretty heavily, to be honest. This is now the third day in a row that we're down. And as you can see from the delivery numbers, it's been nothing but pain, you know? And I wanted to discuss the possibility of us going back and revisiting the 150 range. In order to understand if we can actually visit the 150 range, it is important to understand what Tony Saginagi has to say because he's been calling for this range for a very long time now. And this is not Gordon Johnson. Tony Saginagi has a lot of credibility on the street. So when people want hedge fund managers want to know what the bird case is they go to tony saginai they don't go to gordon johnson so i think one of the main things that he's been talking about and we've discussed this extensively i don't think we have to get into it so much it's this increase in inventory right and we're now at 16 we know this is gonna have to stop at some point but a lot of people are missing the fact that half of the inventory build up for last quarter was snx so SNX cannot be built in Europe or China. So they has to be transported in chips because it can only be built in Fremont. So a little bit of uh, the increase in inventory is SNX. So I don't think we have to worry about this too much. One thing he's also been talking about is the lower credit revenues. And this, I I'm not sure why he's mentioning this because at the end of the day, the street doesn't credit Tesla for any SEV revenues. When they calculate the auto margins, they take credit revenues out. So yeah, I'm not sure why he's mentioning this he's also talking about the lead times and this also comes back to the demand issue which historically speaking has always been i think that just lingering around but i don't think it's pretty relevant at this point and it all comes back to the inventory situation right lead times high inventory they have to cut prices and that is the point right that is a point with tony saginai the price cuts so he's arguing that tesla is gonna have to cut prices again uh, later this year and then that's gonna cause the whole industry to then cut prices and that becomes then a spiral of just so all right so that's tony's take right but in order to understand if we're actually gonna go into the 150s i think it's very important to understand how we actually went to 150 last time right so last time not only did we go to a 150 and this is uh, i mean it feels like a long time ago but it's actually like two three months ago so we went to the 150 and we actually went to the 100 and this is how we started the year right so let's see what caused that sort of drop and see if we're in a similar situation right now so tesla breakdown in terms of like ownership is divided obviously between the industries right this is the big hedge funds this is Elon Musk, this is a main insider for Tesla, and this is retail, right? It's pretty balanced, you know, but last year, the thing that actually triggered the whole sell-off was, believe it or not, Elon Musk. Elon Musk sold, he owned 23% of the company, and he sold all the way down to 13%. So almost half of his stake was him selling. Part of it was to prepare for a recession. Part of it is to prepare for a Twitter acquisition. Regardless of why it happened, that caused a bunch of institutions to then now front run what Elon was doing, right? And we discussed this uh, last year in a video I made about hedge fund selling. Uh, we're gonna get into that later, right? But hedge funds were just like, you know, front running Elon Musk and that caused then a circular motion where like you know not only the insider and this had not happened before right elon had not sold like this ever right so when elon sells that triggers the institutions losing faith and from running him and then to top it off then retail just gets margin cold left and right right they get margin cold and then it's just a spiral of selling pressure and that's what brought us to 150 and then subsequently into 100 right so let's see in terms of hedge funds right like we covered this in the other video so but we know that t row t row it's already out so these are the main hedge funds that could actually move price in terms of uh volume so price t row it's already out right like capital war investors they went from three percent ownership to 1.5 percent ownership so they're half out already. I think they could actually sell their whole stake, whatever is left, right, in the in Q1. So this is definitely a possibility. I don't see retail moving the stock enough to actually bring us to 150 or 100. A retail typically just responds to whatever insiders or hedge funds do, but hedge funds are the most proactive in just driving stock prices. The only one that is kind of missing is Bally Gifford, and Bally Gifford still has about 1% ownership and tesla but i have a feeling that if bali gifford didn't sell last quarter in q4 I don't, I don't see how they sell q1 we got any selling pressure it's probably gonna be capital war investors selling out of their whole whatever's left of their tesla position right and we're gonna be in a world of pain if that happens right but um 
So now, if I'm a hedge fund manager, I wouldn't I wouldn't be selling heavily until I know what the gross margins are gonna be for Q1, right? So let's just say that margins now all of a sudden surprise the upside and we get, I don't know, 23% margins, which could be the case, right? And this is very, very possible, right? If you're a money manager and you make that mistake, unless you have some sort of like insider information, you're kind of toasted, right? Like you're 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 completely screwed. If I'm uh, either Bali Gifford or Capital War investors, I would want to see gross margins first and then make a decision, right? So if we get to a 150s or 100 and it gets started by one of those two hedge funds, it's probably gonna be after the earnings call. That's what I would think. Another thing that is uh, worth understanding is that Tesla is not the Tesla in the past. Tesla has already a lot of cash. So they have 21 billion in cash. So even if gross margins drop to very meaningfully low levels where like profits just evaporate, they still have a coffer of cash. So we've never been in that situation where we have so much cash. And then they have very, very low amount of debt. The debt is, is now pretty much non-existent. This is a uh, formality, right? But the debt should be at zero, right? There's probably like capital leases and things like that. So that's why you you see it at 2 billion but this is pretty meaningfully zero you know so we are pretty well equipped to deal with a recession or a situation in which margins just drop to zero uh anyway so the one thing i wanted to touch on brian feraldi which is somebody i respect a lot in the space he uh put this graph and this graph is just the possibility of making money holding S&P 500 in terms of holding time right like if you hold it for one day it's 50 50 right that you make money so, but if you hold it in a year, then the possibility of you making money all of a sudden just increases very meaningfully to something like 70%. And then if you hold it for 10 years, then it increases to 90%. And if you hold it to 20, then nobody has ever lost money in the stock market if you hold it 20 years. Of course, that seems like a long time. And this is also S&P, right? If you're holding some shit company, of course, that's not gonna be the case. But we all know that Tesla is by far one of the best companies in the stock market in terms of profit, in terms of uh, just growth, in terms of operating leverage, Tesla is up there. What I'm trying to get at here is that the longer you increase your holding period, the higher your chances are of making money. So, right. So anyway, can we go into the 150 levels? Absolutely. We can definitely go into the 150 levels and we can even go into 100. We've done it already, right? But I would imagine the hedge funds are not going to make a move, like a big move until they know margins, unless they get a hand of what margins are going to be for the rest of the year beforehand and that will be insider information so i hope you found value in this video and thank you very much for watching see you next time